Hey guys, Justin here. Quick note, this hot lap can be done on the first or second lap, but I recommend the first lap because you'll have multiple tries at it. And also a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Steve, once again. He really sent me a really cool paint scheme for the cause for St. Jude this time. So again, the link will be in the description if anyone wants to donate to them. And I'll be donating the proceeds of this video once again to St. Jude. So uh, looking forward to that. And I hope that we can do well with this paint scheme. Let's get right to the lap. It's like you just gotta give them a little bit of your, their co the cookie just to like get them to shut huh. up and go away. Like just yeah. humor them a little bit just to shut them up. You just gotta appease them. Give them one sound bite for their state-run media. First or second lap? Uh, technically second, but I do first because it's almost it's almost the same. They're breaking, I'm, I'm breaking at the 100, sign 103. What are you guys doing? A little bit before. I was able to break off for the hot lap anyway. I was able to break up the 100. The break. I also haven't changed my brake bias. What? Oh, brake bias. I'm having a problem. Yeah, I'm at 60. No wonder it's just this hasn't handled right. What are you guys running on for hot lap? What do you mean? What are you guys running break by? Uh, 57. 57. You need it for turn three. Yeah. I've, Even for a hot lap? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you said 57? Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at that. So here we're going to start with the out lap here. And so I like to do first lap, hot lap. It's a tiny bit slippier, but I don't think that the difference between first and second lap is enough to where you're going to want to throw away your first lap just to do a second. It's too risky. So I just like doing this first lap. So I really keep it slow along the top here, and we're gonna do the classic. You've probably heard it a million times by now. We start up high, and we drive down low and make it a straight exit, but without sliding the tires. So you see I'm still only in third gear. I found this a little more consistent than fourth gear for building up speed. So it will be a little bit slidier though, so you gotta really rein it in. So you see it's a little loose, but now we have a really straight exit, and I am got into fourth gear there, and we're carrying a lot of speed down to the start finish line. All right, so now we're gonna go to the uh, start finish line here and we're going into turn one. So what we're looking to do here is you can actually drive really deep into one. You might not realize this yet, but I full throttle or partial throttle all the way just about to the white line. And so what we're gonna be doing is right before I get down to the white line, like maybe around here, I start dragging the brake. And the reason that I do that is because my angle is very straight as I go down because uh, I haven't really put any wheel or brake into it yet. But what we want is that rotation to keep it on the white. And so we time it to where by the time we get on the brake and it gets all the way down to the white, we've rotated the car enough to where it just sticks to the white line. And we can only accomplish that by dragging the brake, just starting a little bit before we get down to the white line. So let's see that in action here. So we're Throttle, 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 then right before we get to the, see, this is the, just the very beginning, but right before we get to the white line, we put a brake drag in it, and we just stick that to the white line. And so, once I, uh, once the car is not traveling up the racetrack anymore, so like you can feel the weight shift, or you can tell that the car doesn't want to go sliding up the track anymore, it just wants to kind of stay where it is, then at that point you can put about half throttle into it, and that half throttle is actually going to get the car loose and then we put it up to the three quarters throttle here and what we call that is getting the car on the right rear I think you've heard it a couple times in videos here but basically under throttle the car is loose around the bottom here so we're just whipping it around the corner and keeping the car on the right rear and the good part about this is that we're getting rotation while also gassing up and so now the next thing I want to talk about in this corner is that we're going to get to bumps big bumps right here Bump, bump, bump. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see in slow motion, but you'll definitely uh, feel the bumps or experience the bumps when you're driving. Do not go full throttle before these bumps or else you're going to spin out. So once you're on that partial throttle, just stay on that two thirds throttle, get through the bumps, and then start straightening your wheel out and raising your throttle up to full. You can see I'm not quite up to full yet, but pretty darn close. And you can see I'm just letting the car naturally slide up to the wall. If I was trying to pin down the car, in a perfect world, you the car would stay along the white line for a little longer. But it all depends on the amount of speed you're carrying. 
So if you're carrying a lot of speed, the car at that amount of throttle will just kind of want to start naturally sliding up. And the key to carrying your momentum is you don't want the rears to slide. So because you don't want the rears to slide, you just guide the car sliding up the track. And you can see the exit's really wide here. So because the exit is wide, we actually can carry that speed and still uh, let the car slide up the track and not hit the wall. So in a perfect world, I'd stay on the white line a little longer, but we would carried a ton of speed through here, so it was a pretty uh, darn good uh, one and two there. So now we're going to get down to three and four. So what we're going to do in three and four is we're going to break around the 100. You can break a little later than the 100, but I honestly don't feel a ton of benefit to it. So what I like doing is breaking either right at or right before the 100 and basically getting on this 40 to 50 to 30 percent break. So I start with a stab. The reason that we start with a stab is to slow the car down. So if you see my brake have a lot of brake in it relatively, that means I'm using it to slow down. So right now I want the car to slow down because I'm carrying too much speed. And then by the time I realize that the car has uh, settled to a point where it wants to go down the hill under braking as opposed to straight, then we can just back that brake down to a drag. And so this drag in this case is going to be at around 20%, 25%. And we carry this drag all the way down to the white. And now here's the part that's really, really tempting. A lot of tracks, when you get to this white line, that's the signal to get on the throttle. But if you get on the throttle right here, you're not going to make the exit and you're going to lose a lot of time because you're just sliding, sliding, sliding. So what I do here is I actually wait on the brake and then go to partial throttle instead of full throttle. So this partial throttle allows me to keep the status quo on the white line while also preparing myself to get a good angle on exit so that I can get to full throttle as early as possible without sliding the tires. So you see now once I get to full throttle, now I can straighten out the wheel and not get, I get a little loose but it's relatively not sliding the tires. So you see the angle that I made on the exit here was really straight. So if I were to gas up here, not here, if I were to gas up here I would go up towards the wall really early and have to kind of drive along the wall on exit and kind of slide the car around. And that's very slow because of both the distance you're traveling and the momentum that you're not carrying. Whereas we carry that same momentum and now we just get full throttle a little later. Now our exit's really straight and now we can make the exit. So that's a, so a little bit of patience on the bottom of three and four is going to get you a long way on your hot lap. And notice I stay in fourth gear here. I'm going to talk about shifting in the race, but in hot lap, we are staying in fourth gear. So that's a very good lap. We carry a good amount of momentum and we get into the 36 nines. All right, now let's go check out how we did in the race. All right, getting into the race here, we got a really nice look in St. Jude Children's Hospital research paint here. And it, it's made by Steve Hoffman. He did a really good job once again. It, uh, it looks really, really good. So. Hope we can get a good result with it. Let's see how it went. All right, so here's the race. We ended up taking the dub. Pretty strong victory too. Uh, really benefited by a great qualifying run. Qualified with a 0-0. Zero, zero. And uh, kind of some of the fat new people that I knew would be faster on pace were mired in midfield. So I knew I had a chance to drive away. Uh, so basically what I did here was I go right when pace car goes. Uh, this isn't much of a secret. I do this because we all fight in our Discord server for who can get the best average lap. And if you go right on pace car, you get a better average lap. So that's kind of funny. But anyways, uh, started in second gear. First just didn't feel like I had enough for me to go off of. Maybe it's slightly better. I don't know. I, th I just thought second was safe enough. So I drive it pretty far into one. And then just the same line here. So my one and two line is going to be almost the exact same as my qualifying line. In fact, I run a really fast lap uh, on my second lap. I ran a 13 on my second lap and a 25 on my third lap. And so you see here, the only difference is I back off a little bit more off the throttle on entry. And then just a little bit easier back on the throttle. Not getting to full throttle quite as early because if you get onto full throttle super duper early, like say right here, you're gonna start sliding up to the wall and you'll make corner exit, but you're not really gaining any time 
or the time that you're, you'll gain is marginal, but then you're gonna be sliding on your right side tire, so that's gonna increase the heat and the wear. So I just like to keep it on the white line for as long as possible in one and two, and then just kind of drive it straight off without any sliding, and it's still pretty darn fast. And so for three and four here, I, I found early run, I start braking a little bit before the 100, and then we're shifting immediately. This is lap four, but I can assure you I was shifting on every lap before this too. See, all I had to do to shift, and a lot of people don't know this, all you gotta do to shift is blip the throttle to about a third or a half, and so it's one big motion. It's blip, click your throttle if you have paddle shifters, or throw it in there if you have a, a, a manual or whatever you call those, sorry, I'm stupid. But uh, I have paddle shifters, so it makes it a little easier for me. So I blip, click, and let, and let go. It's all one super smooth motion. So you see, I'll show that one more time and, I, and I'll try to slow motion it for you guys here. Uh, I just want slow motion, aha. So we'll do it really slow here. Watch the throttle down here and then watch the RPMs too. So throttle, RPM, off throttle. So it was all one super smooth motion. And so from there, you keep it on the white for a super long time in third gear. And then you shift whenever you get close to that 8,000 in revs. And you can either go by watching the dash or I like to go by the sound. The sound, you can keep your eyes on the road and not have to worry about uh, uh, watching the dash, but you have to get a good ear for it. So get used to that. And then you see the same thing here. I'm going to do a slow-mo again for you guys. Blip down to a third, click, and go back into the throttle. That's all you got to do to upshift in these cars. There's no other special, uh, you don't need a clutch. You don't need a special button or anything. You don't need any macros. Uh, this, this is literally all you got to do. Blip, click, back in. All one motion. All right, very, very cool. So I was able to get out to a pretty healthy lead. Um... We'll go to the end of the race. Really, I was kind of just time trialing this race. Uh, I ended in the 38 threes, and it was pretty consistent there. My last five laps were all within about a tenth, so that's how I know I was uh, doing pretty well. So we'll check this lap here. So you see, I let off the throttle earlier, and I dragged the brake for longer. And then I still get the car to turn back down the hill and get the car on the right rear. And you see it's going to be harder to stick to that white line. So the longer you get in the run, you can kind of start letting it slide up a little earlier. But uh, this isn't ideal when you're trying to save tires. I was kind of only doing this because there's only a couple laps left and I was kind of pushing the issue. Just because I was trying to get a good time. Kind of just having some fun. And then three and four, I'm going to start breaking. That was actually a little late. Uh, I don't want to do that lap. I, I, over, I overshot that lap. So we're going to go to this lap, where instead I break around the 150. And you get it really early down to the white. Then you just wait on the white. And this is really good on your tires, and it's not slow. It seems slow, but because you're able to stay on the bottom for so long, you're just kind of shortcutting the track compared to the people that are trying to arc it super fast comparatively so like I, I ran a 34 right there and then so still faster than second place tenth up on third place and fourth place so yeah we're we're still hauling even though we've been pushing the whole race 30 la so here's the thing about twin ring 30 laps I really think that you don't have to save too too much you have to have a really good uh, line at the beginning that naturally saves your tires, but having those five less laps than the last time we were around here really means that you can push a little bit harder. So that's pretty fun. Uh, I like that type of race. I mean, saving tires is good, but uh, races where you can kind of go balls to the wall are, are also fun once in a while. So, yeah, that's about it. We got a... Uh, we were able to cross the finish line in first place, about almost a four second lead over second. And one of our best results to date, uh, this is one of my favorite tracks, so I was really glad to see that. Um, 
really was hoping to get a result here today and was glad to see that I uh, was able to execute. So there we go. And now we get to do the victory burnouts for the first time in a while in top split. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope to see you all on the track.